Hello to everyone. Thank you all for joining me at this time. My name is Shavi Zane, and I'm coming on to bring a very transparent and personal message, but it's also one that's going to allow me to get into some of the um, things that you all need to hear right now. Now, this message is not for everybody. This is specifically for the chosen seed, but it's for those of you who's in the back. Those of you who felt like you wasn't a part of the greater whole. So this is why I'm coming in with my personal story. And then I want to get off into, you know, because the message here is called, what do you need to lose in order to gain your inheritance? And so it's going to get deep, but like I said, it's not for everybody. So first I want to start off by saying, um, my personal testimony, many people wonder well, how did you end up being where you are today? Some of you are very aware of, of the fact that um, I used to work as a registered nurse. I still have a registered nurse's license. Um, and I did it for five years. Prior to that, I worked in healthcare for a very long time. That's the only thing that I ever knew, was caring for people. Um, and so within the past, I say the past five years, I mean, it's been rocky all my life, but the past four or five years of my life, things really started to shift. Now, you all know we're in the age of Aquarius. And so during this time, many of the chosen seed had to go through some major changes. Um, I also want to say, before I get into this, one of the reasons why I ended up doing this particular message at this time is because during my sleep, when I was having a dream, I don't remember most of the dream, but I remember seeing flames, like just whew, flames that went up. I don't remember the dream though. And so this morning, I was woken up out of my sleep around 3 a.m. And I laid in a bed and I had a vision in my awakened state. And it was literally flames going up. But as the flames started to simmer down, it was a bunch of gold. And so I was like, okay, there's something to this fire. So I laid there and I was going, you know, speaking to the Most High, to my spiritual team, gaining an understanding. And I started receiving all of these uploads. And I was told that you have to completely clear out, burn out everything in order to receive your inheritance. And so it was a message for me. And this is why I'm coming with my personal testimony, but it's also a message for you. So getting back to what I was saying in terms of my career path or whatnot, I was working as a registered nurse for quite a number of years. Um, you know, I had many children within a marriage. I had five children with a man that I was married to and one with a man that I had been with prior for multiple years. Okay. But, um, I had a really rough marriage, you know, uh, and around four years ago, I had one of my daughters went through some health issues. She ended up being diagnosed with brain cancer. This was around the time that I had begin to awaken to my, you know, to spirituality. I was starting to take the path. I was, I had created my altar. I was starting to learn about um, energy, metaphysics, and all of these different things, wearing crystals and all of these different things, but I was still a babe in it, right? And so, but this, I was in this energy right before she had gotten diagnosed. So when it happened, the Most High had already began preparing me with knowing that your thoughts create things, and so I was able to walk through and we was able to get through that particular season of our life with me knowing I had to know that she was going to be well. I had to know that she was going to be healed. And today she is healed. She's been healed for quite some time now, has the most energy. OK, no medications, no nothing. She is 100 percent healthy. OK, and I give all thanks and praise to the most high God. But during that time. I had so many different situations that was coming at me and my family. And I ended up um, dealing with DCFS because when she got diagnosed, myself and my husband at the time, we did not want her to go through treatments. And so we were saying, okay, we want her to take the holistic approach. And the hospital, they ended up calling DCFS as a result of us saying we wanted to take a different approach. And um, we ended up going through the court systems there. It was a mess, nothing short of a mess. And so we battled with that for over about a year, okay? 
finally got those monkeys up off of our back because that's exactly what they are, some monkeys and some clowns, okay? And so once that was over with, you know, the Most High started showing me like, hey, I need you to awaken to the purpose that I have for you. I got a mission for you, right? And so while I was working as a nurse, you know, um, I started saying, I can't just go to work and just be a nurse. I cannot just go to work and just pass medication. I couldn't do it. So good thing I was in a, in a, in a nursing home that was pretty lenient. You see what I'm saying? Um, and so I started taking my, my cards to work and I started doing readings on my patients. Okay. Um, and then I also ended up going and, you know, having like, um, I don't know. Some people call it like a, 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 a sermon. It wasn't no sermon though, but I stood up in front of them around New Year's Eve and, you know, read some biblical text, but brought in the interpretation that was given to me through the Most High God. And it was really taking me out of my shell, but it was also showing me something is shifting within you. Something it was, you know, the Most High was telling me, some, I'm changing something within you. I'm, I'm preparing you for something. And so, I always tell you all, one of the first things that I ask for when I began my spiritual journey was wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, okay? And so, and also to be shown what my purpose was. When I tell you I had to burn out, I, everything, destructive energy came in when I asked for these things, okay? Some of you might be wondering why you're going through the things you're going through. So this is why I'm bringing this message to you because I want y'all to hear full transparency from me so that you can have, so that you can see that there is light that you're walking into. You're coming out of a dark space, but this is part of the season. This is a part of the transformation. It doesn't look the same for everybody though. This is just my personal um, testimony. And so I ended up you know, taking some losses. Like during that time, my car got repossessed because my daughter was in the hospital. You know, I had to be at her bedside for almost, you know, two years. It was about a year and a half that I was at her bedside. And so working was not even something that I could do. Um, and being married at the time, you know, I still had the income coming in from my partner at the time, but that was very shaky. Okay. Um, and so my credit went, whew, okay. I went from 700 and something to, you might as well say zero, okay? Lost a lot. And so the great thing though is that I was still in the energy of gratitude and praise because I knew that things was changing for a reason. So I ended up, um, and I remember kind of, you know, even when my car got repossessed, y'all, I still remember being in this energy of gratitude and praise. Like I, there was no point in time that I was angry, upset, or sad. None of that, okay? But this is the energy that you have to embody in order to overcome, like being the eagle in the eye of the storm. So while those waves, is, you know, and that wind is swimming around you, you still maintaining your peace right there in the center. And so I knew the importance of doing that. I knew the importance of maintaining my faith. That's real faith right there, okay? And so... Fast forward, I was still having many marital problems, okay? I've been having marital problems since the beginning, but it was getting worse. And um, my spouse at the time, you know, things just didn't work. It didn't work. He had to go away for a while, okay? Um, and when this happened, I ended up having to take all of my children. I did get a car, but it was a regular car, regular car. And I'll tell y'all about that in a minute too. This is going to be a long testimony for those of you who wonder, it's going to be a minute, okay? So stick with me if you find that this is, just stick with me. So the car that I had, it was literally a four-door car fitting myself with, you know, five of my children at the time because I had to leave behind my oldest son, which that, that broke my heart. But I had to do it because I had to relocate from the state that I was in to a completely different state. Now, when this happened, I ended up taking all of my children one seater, you know, they all squished in like little sardines in the back. This is the car that I was driving out, driving around for over two years now. And so I took them from the state that I was in all the way to another state to go and live with some family members. Okay. The family members that I moved in with ended up telling us after a couple of months, hey, the landlord said you got to go. Mind you, this is right after COVID hit. Okay. 
I'm, listen, this thing gets crazy. This was right after COVID hit. I relocated to another state. My intentions was, okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to transfer my nurse's license to this new state. I'm going to work, save up my money, and we're going to get a place and everything is going to be happily ever after, right? Me, myself, and my five children until I'm able to get on my feet and get back to my oldest child. And so I get out there. I had no ID. I'm talking about I couldn't find a state ID. I couldn't find a driver's license. Drove way out there and had no ID. How did this happen? Only the most high God. Okay. Only my spiritual team. So when I got there, first of all, I couldn't even apply for my nurse's license to be transferred because I had no identification. So I started going through all of these ringers. I'm talking about I was stressed out. I cried a few times like, well, what am I supposed to do? I have no idea. I kept trying to send back for, you know, to the state that I had just left. Like, OK, can you all, uh, you know, find a way to do this? Because COVID was going on. So all of the offices was closed. It was hard to get in contact with people. This went on literally for over a year that I had no ID. But mind you, in the midst of this, I told you, after a couple of months of staying with these family members, living on a couch, I had to bring my own couch into their home. Me and my five children slept on a, not a, not a sofa, but my love seat, okay, for a couple of months. And when they came to, to me and said, well, my landlord said y'all have to leave because it's, we're over the capacity. There's too many people here in this apartment. First of all, I questioned how authentic and true it was because at that time, COVID, we was literally, COVID had literally just struck. And so it was like, um, they wasn't putting nobody out at that time, but this is what they said. And so I had to roll with it. So me and my children, they took us to a motel. Uh, these family members took us to a motel and prostitution, drug dealing, fighting. I mean, it. I saw it all there. All of that energy, that low vibrational energy, people in their kind of nature, that's what I was surrounded by. But when I got there, actually while I was driving to this motel, I remember giving praise. Like I was crying and singing and giving praise to the Most High God and just gratitude that change was happening. Even though it might not have been the most comfortable change, I knew that change was happening. And so even though I kind of felt some type of way towards those family members, I knew that the Most High was doing something, getting me out of a particular environment so that I could start to really focus in on my gifts because that's one of the first things I did when I got there. And so I ended up going on my Facebook and I started doing... Um, readings because I had already been reading my cards using them for myself and like I said I used them for my patients when I was working as a registered nurse and so I got on Facebook live first time ever got on Facebook live I had to push past my fear because I had a strong fear of speaking in front of people remember I was a strong introvert for many years but I was coming out of that energy and so another thing that I ended up losing was my beauty okay and that might sound vain but that was something that ended up um, that I ended up having to lose at that time. I had lost a lot of weight. I'm already not a, a big woman, you know. I've always been smaller, but I had done a 40 day fast. Um, this happened prior, right before I ended up leaving the state that I was in. I had done a 40 day fast, and so I had lost a lot of weight. But when we ended up moving to this motel, I had lost even more weight because at this point we was eating out of a microwave. And this lasted for months and months and months, okay? Um, and so tuna fish, anything that I could put inside the little baby refrigerator that they had. And um, all the while, I was still giving praise to the Most High. I got on Facebook Live. I started doing readings. Um, and, you know, I would charge a little bit here and there for people to get readings. But I knew that that was not the end-all, be-all. And I kept saying, "What? Well, okay, what am I supposed to do? And I kept hearing the message, keep going keep going. You cannot give up now. Keep going. And so I kept going. And so we went from one motel to another motel to another motel until finally I got to an extended stay motel where I had so much gratitude because at that point I had a full size refrigerator. I had a little stove that I could cook on. And so this went on literally y'all for two years up until today. And some of you might be like, what, what do you mean up until today? Yes, up until this very moment, 
we still live in an extended state, but I've now relocated back to the state where I'm now closer to my son, which is a blessing. Now, let me tell y'all, this is not for sympathy. This is for me to give you all the full transparent testimony so that you can understand the depths of the, the trans of the changes that we as the chosen seed have been going through in this time, in this season, but it's all for good reason, okay? So fast forward, y'all. Um, finally, I ended up getting my nurse's license. This is prior to coming back to this state. I finally ended up getting my nurse's license in the state that I had gone to. I was in, I was uh, get, transferring it to Washington, D.C. at the time. And y'all, when I tell you, as soon as I got the license, they put out a mandatory vaccination um, policy. Mandatory. Now, y'all, for those of you who've been watching me for a minute, you already know. It's not happening. Ain't nobody putting nothing up in this bloodstream over here. Okay? So, automatically, I knew the most high was saying, mm-mm. So, now you got the license, but you're still not going to use it. But it, by this point, y'all, the Most High had already had me well into my gifts and it had already been shown to me, okay, this is what I'm going to use you for as a vessel and these are the messages that I'm going to bring forth through you and this is how you're going to use the cards and it's not about your ego. So listen, y'all, I had to die to my ego in so many ways. I had to, you know, die to my ego concerning my uh, financial circumstances. Like, um, I, and listen, it's it's like, I had to find my own self-value in the absence of material things. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. I had to find my own self-value in the absence of material things. And I found it. But I had to humble myself down. And I had to stay in the energy of faith. And I had to remind myself that my value did not come through anything that was material. It came through who I recognize myself to be. As a child of the most high God, I have, I have more, I am valuable. The enemy, you know, you'll never know the power you possess, okay, when you lack awareness of the war against your own soul. And so you'll come into the understanding of how powerful you are when you are actually losing everything, when you're taking losses, that's when you start to get stronger. That's when you start to fight back. Because see, as long as you wrapped up in the matrix and the matrix, uh, it consists of, you know, you value yourself based on what you can see through your natural eyes, the material things that you possess through your natural eyes, the degrees that you have, the, the paychecks, the, 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 the clothing, the cars, the, the place that you live in, you value, you, you, that actually becomes what actually uh, determines your own self-value. And that's backwards. It's never supposed to be that way, but the matrix, the powers that were created, it structured it in that way. So that when you take the losses, there goes your value. Soon as you lose one thing, suddenly, you know, you're less valuable. And you lose something else and then you're less valuable all the way until you become, till you, till you look in the mirror and you say, I'm worthless. You know, they say I'm hopeless like a penny with a hole in it, right? Y'all remember that song for those of you that's around my age group or older. And so that's the type of energy that ends up, um, that you end up projecting out into the universe. And so many people do not overcome the losses because they uh, their self-worth goes when the things go. And so if you don't have no self-worth, you, you can't fight back. But see, my self-worth was actually increasing. The more losses that I took, the more value I had in myself because it was like, for me, it was, this is showing me that the prayers that I'm putting out there is working, but there's, there has to be some shifts and some movement around. There's, there's going to be some losses that I got to take. I'm going to have to die to my ego. I'm going to have to die to my pride. I'm going to have to die to fear. I'm going to have to die to um, lack mentality. Okay. It was so many different things that I had to come into the realization that was it was in my way. Spiritual blockages that I had created from within based on my external environment, based on my perception of the reality that I was in. It was an illusion. 
because I came to realize that even being in one room, because some of y'all, when y'all watch my videos, you say, well, why is it so much snoring? Why do I hear people sleeping? It's because from right here where, where I sit, I'm still living out my testimony. And don't, don't get it twisted, y'all. The Most High has blessed me with an overflow of abundance, an overflow of abundance. That's why I can tell you all um, yesterday, I was able to go and purchase, you know, a car, a new car for me and my children. And I'm going to tell you why I felt good about it, because I was able to pay cash for this car. So now we're going to have enough room for all of us to sit in. I'm going to tell you why I felt good about this purchase, though, because the man who I bought the car from, he has such a good spirit, such a good soul. And I knew this just from walking up to him, just from the moment of seeing him. It was just something about his energy. I knew that he was a good person. And so when I was sitting in there waiting to, to speak to this man yesterday, I was almost in tears, not because I was getting this car, but because I was giving thanks to the most high God that I could be used as a vessel to enhance his living circumstances through the wealth that I've been able to accumulate because the most high has, I have the most high has not, I have not dashed a toe. We have not wanted for anything. Matter of fact, I've been able to have an overflow of abundance to where I've been able to give more than I've ever been able to give to anybody, even working as a registered nurse. So the finances is not a problem, y'all. The Most High is elevating me in many different ways, but the credit score is jacked, right? So I'm still working on that. And so there's, there's certain barriers, but see, the barriers are also an illusion because what I was shown is that my testimony is also a part of my breakthrough. And so this is one of the reasons why I'm bringing this to y'all because I want to make sure that when I'm fully elevated, when the Most High places me back on my throne, which I'm already sitting on it, right? But when, when it's, when it's uh, uh, readily available for those who are the naysayers, those people who worked against me, those people who worked against you, they're waiting to be able to see something unfold in the, with their physical eyes. In their mind, if you don't have the home, if you don't have the car, if you don't have the spouse, if you don't have, you know, all of these things that disintegrate with time, then you haven't made it. But see, the Most High takes it all from you in the material just to show you how wealthy you are when you lack all of those things. True wealth comes from your own self-value. True wealth comes from you being able to have gratitude and even the things that most people take for granted. The Most High will take it all from you. During your transformation season, the Most High will take it all from you. And some of you can, it's many people that's going to be able to get on here, not everybody, because it doesn't look the same for everybody. It really just depends on what your purpose is. But you may come on here and you might write in the comments, I lost everything. I lost my family. I lost my friends. I lost my job. I'm outside homeless. I'm in a shelter. I'm in a hotel room. I'm this and that. Everybody has a testimony of the losses that they've taken because of the times that we're in right now. So don't be ashamed of it. Don't see it as being a situation where um, you're being punished. It's a blessing, the transformation that you're going through. But if you can't see it through your spiritual eyes and you only looking through your natural eyes, then it becomes that much, that much harder and you prolong getting to your inheritance. I've done generational curse breaking, y'all. I've broken the energy of fear. I've broken the energy of lack. I've broken the energy of self-loathing or any insecurities or uh, fear of speaking my truth. I've broken the energy of ego and pride. I've had to release my carnal nature. I've had to release so many different things during this transformation. And it has been one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. And it would be selfish of me to withhold such a powerful testimony at this season because when I have my, my, my breakthrough, when, when, it's, uh, when it's evident and when it's apparent to the world and everybody is looking at me and saying, Shabby just got it all, you know, I can't get there. She, you know, and they just thinking that, oh, well, somehow you came, you, you got this because you, you had a silver spoon, you know, when you was born. Somehow, you, you know, you just had it good, you know. Trust me, this testimony right here and the testimony that many of you have to bring is going to be a testimony that needs to be laid out before the world. The chosen seed has to prepare to lay their testimonies out before the world because, see, it's going to be a lot of people that's going through some changes, y'all. It's going to be a lot of people that's going to have to take losses or what they, what they deem as losses 
what appears through the natural eyes as being losses, but it's really gains if you're looking at it through your spiritual eyes. You will never know the power you possess when you lack the awareness of the war against your soul. These are messages, you know, as I, when I woke up, these are the things that my spiritual team was telling me. That's why I'm looking over here. These are things that my spiritual team was telling me in terms of why I saw those flames go up. And then I saw the gold that, um, that was uh, exposed after the flames died down. It's because the true inheritance can only be given to you after you lose all of those things that had a stronghold over your mind, body, and spirit. There's a lot of people, you know, I always told people in the past, I don't wear my nurse's license as my crown. That's why you, you wouldn't find me walking around, maybe at one point initially, when I still, I didn't know myself. That's why it's so important to know thyself. I didn't know myself. So initially it was like, yeah, you know, I'm a registered nurse. But I, even still, I was never braggadocious. I never felt like it was something where I had to look down at people or one of those nurses that, oh, you're just a CNA or you're just this, you know, that's just so ugly. But it's a lot of people out here that's like that. And so because I never wore it as my crown to begin with, for the most part, it was easier for me to lose it or to, I didn't lose it because I could still use it if I want to, but to walk away from it and to step into my calling. I'm not looking back. Okay. And some people would be like, well, you, maybe you should hold on to it because you, listen, when you step into your calling, you step in to your calling. You take the leap of faith. When you see the fool card in a tarot deck, that fool is packing light, jumping off a cliff, looking up. So you naturally anticipate that you will not dash a toe and that you will be well protected and that that new beginning that you jumping into is going to be one that's going to be filled with so many blessings and so much of your inheritance and so much of your gifts and everything is going to be, it's going to be an overflow. And that's exactly how it's been for me. Okay. The amount of money that I paid to stay in this room is well over what a person would pay for a three bedroom apartment. But you know, there's certain restrictions that this system has in place, you know, when it comes to certain things, but even those things are not going to hold me back. Even here in, in, in one room, I've been able to create beautiful memories because for me, it's not about being able to say, well, you have a separate room over there. I have a separate room over here, this and that. It has not deterred me from stepping into my calling and maintaining my purpose. Don't allow your situations to, to you know, even if you outside in the streets homeless, you can still bring your testimony to the world. You can still uplift and empower others right from where you sit. And that is the energy that actually catapults you out of your circumstances and towards your inheritance. Don't allow your situations to stop you from doing what you've been called to do, especially if you are being called to be a, be a healer or a teacher um, of any sort in the spiritual world. You know, when you're helping people to go down this narrow path, Step into your calling from right where you sit. That is the test. How committed are you to the process? How committed are you to the growth? How committed are you to making it to the finish now, knowing that this is not a race, okay? We, we pacing it, okay? We pacing ourselves here, but we have to keep going. We have to persevere. We have to maintain our purpose. You don't get derailed or deterred. You keep pushing, and so, you know, um, like I said, it's just, it's been, it's been a beautiful journey and I wouldn't go back and change not one thing because my gifts, I've been able to awaken my own spiritual gifts as a result of losing or, or what seemed to be losses of the material world. My spiritual gifts, the most high blessed me with that infinite wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I still haven't come into realizing the full potential of the wisdom that I've been blessed with. Neither have you. You know, it's, it's something that you grow into and that you evolve into lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So I'm, I'm just touching the surface here. But the wisdom that I have been granted and the gifts that I have been able to awaken has been very um, healing and um, enlightening, not only for myself, but for my children and for those of you who, was, who have been guided to come to me to get personal readings and to you know seek out uh, clarity through these videos that I make on here. 
I appreciate all of you who support me, okay? But I, I have to remind y'all, it's only the beginning. If you're going through something right now, if you're taking what seems to be losses in your life, you have to look at it as being gains because remember, you asked for change. You asked to be shown your purpose. At this time, many people, especially the chosen seed, it's almost impossible to get up and go to a nine to five job. If you're not in your calling, it's almost impossible for you to do that because your soul, your spirit is pulling you and it's calling you. Your higher self is calling you to step into something that's greater, that goes beyond a nine to five. That's only that you're only uh, that you're putting your time and your energy into all for the sake of small financial gain. For some, it might be, you know, more. But it's still not enough. You still feel that void there. And that void is, is telling you, is there to remind you that what needs to be in replacement of that void, what you need to fill that void with is your purpose. And so you don't want to resist the changes. Go with the flow. You got to ride these waves, y'all. If you're going through changes, ride the waves. That flame of fire that I saw, it represents being able to walk through the fire. We, you're not going to fear you don't fear walking through the flame because that flame is what's necessary for that coal that becomes a diamond on the other side. Y'all are turning into diamonds out there. Okay? So it doesn't matter what things look like. It doesn't matter what. Just know that you're going through a metamorphosis. You are a caterpillar that is transforming into a butterfly. You're getting ready to be able to take far heights. You're getting ready to fly high. But you got to come out of that state of being a, a caterpillar crawling on your belly, staying on the surface level of life, still, you know, you're crawling through the matrix, believing that what you see with your natural eyes is what defines your value. No, that's a lie. So let me just see. I'm going to pull a couple of cards because this message is getting long, but I wanted to first share my testimony. So I hope that it is helpful for those of you out there. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to be sharing with y'all not only my testimony of where I had to come from in order to get here, but when I do get there, you all are going to know that it's not because I was given some sort of privilege, you know, through somebody here in the natural world. This is all the most high God's doing right here. And so I'm going to share my entire journey with y'all. So look at this. We have solitude and authority. Of solitude and authority. So some of you are having to go into solitude, which means you had to lose a lot of people in your life. People, places, things, okay? But it's allowing you to become the leader, the emperor of your empire. It's showing you how to take back authority, how to take your power back especially when it comes to your foundation with the number four, but this foundation is not about the physical foundation. The first foundation that you are taking authority over is the one that is within yourself, creating that security within yourself, knowing that the, the foundation that you build in internally is one that cannot be moved. And so you step into your power. You step into emperor mode. You create those healthy boundaries for yourself. You go into warrior mode in the spiritual realm, cutting out and breaking all them generational curses, casting out all them spells that the enemy was putting towards the chosen. Okay? Casting out all fear, all lack mentality. You, you out. This is you with that sword in the spiritual realm saying, try me if you want to. Try me if you want to. I know my strength. And remember, I said to you all, you'll never know the true power. You'll never know your true power when you lack awareness of the war against your own soul. If you don't know the war that's been happening against your soul, the enemy has a strategic agenda to sell the souls of the chosen. And people say, well, what do you mean sell the soul? Yeah, if, and if you believe in biblical texts, it's in biblical texts, okay, about the selling of souls, and that other nations would no longer buy these souls because things, things are changing. They're, they're, they're operating in fear now because they recognize that the Most High God said, enough. I'm waking up my children now. It's time for the body of Christ consciousness to awaken out of sleep. And so you stepping into your authority. That's what this represents. So you go into solitude because you're being built in that energy. In that space of solitude, from where you sit, you don't have a lot of people around you. You are in the perfect position. 
you are in the perfect place and in a perfect position in order to build yourself, to become the most powerful and strongest version of yourself. Other people would be too much of a distraction. You need the solitude to come into full awareness. So let me see what else is coming out here. Oh, that's a lot of cards, but I'm going to take them, y'all. Look at this. We have destruction. Didn't I just tell y'all isn't what this is what the message has been all about the whole time. Destruction. That destructive energy. But you see this card in the other tarot deck. This is the tower card. Okay. In this card is showing you that the destruction is happening internally. You are the one that's being broken down. That false version of who the matrix created you to be. The one that you was conditioned to be. Your representative. Okay. That's the one that's being broken down. Because after the ashes, you're going to be Phoenix. You will be Phoenix rising from the ashes. So first you get torn down. Every part of who you thought you was, every part of what you thought this whole thing was all about, your thought process, your spiritual belief system, how you view the Most High God, how you view your existence here, okay, what, what you wanted other people to believe about you, what other people told you you was, all of these false narratives that you that you created and picked up through the matrix, through the false illusionary system that the evil that the enemy created, has to be broken down and torn down. And it happens from within. And up there you see the number 16, which represents when you bring that together, that's the number seven. So a lot of this is spiritual. Okay. This is a spiritual disruption. This is a spiritual dismantling. <clears throat> of the falsehood of the representative and it's a very necessary one but it's one that is a blessing and it's one that you will be able to get through you will rise up out of it because it was meant for you to rise up out of it it wasn't meant for you to be dismantled and broken down and be left in shreds with nothing it was meant for you to be in the dust of your own in, in, in the ashes you know, as you lay in the ashes of the false narrative of who you was, you become Phoenix and you rise up out of them ashes and you soar high from that point. That's what it means. And then you have here, conclusions are within reach. This is not the end all be all. This is a snapshot moment of your life. You may not be able to see everything clearly, okay? There's still some obstruction. It's, the vision is still a little bit obscured, okay? You can see that. But that's okay because it's going to become clearer the closer that you get. The more that you do the work, the more that you step outside of seeing this with your natural eyes, it becomes clearer. Conclusions are within reach. So you're almost at the finish line. Please know this. Okay? Look at this, y'all. I can't make this up. I'm going to show y'all what this says here. The most high, let me tell y'all something. Everybody, people get so caught up in the traditional way of people saying this is the only way that the Most High can speak. Everything is energy. You are energy. I am energy. And that's why when I talk to y'all and you say, I feel like you was talking to me, it's because I am talking to you. I'm being used as a vessel to speak and to communicate with you because I can, I can relate to your circumstances. And the Most High said, get up out of your sleep at three o'clock and tell them what your testimony is. Don't withhold any part of it because if you withhold it, that means that the ego is still in the way. The pride is still in the way. Let me show y'all what this says. Trust the universe. This woman is out here dancing in spite of the disrupt disruptive energy that you've had to go through internally. Trust the most high God. Trust that those manifestations and those affirmations that the, and that faith that you have and all of those beautiful things that you've been doing, the breaking of the generational curses, all of these things is happening for your highest good. You got to have faith. You got to trust. That's real faith. You got to have that crazy faith where those people that's around you in your physical circle, they laughing at you. They saying, man, they done lost their damn mind talking about they a millionaire and they ain't got a dog on pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. But you sitting over there saying, no, because my spiritual account reads infinite abundance, boo. I see my spiritual account. This ain't about what you see in the physical. 
This goes beyond what you see with your natural eyes, but because those people around you, they only see through their, their physical eyes, they have no divine connection. They have no understanding of the transformation that you're going through. They cannot see who you are becoming. And oh my goodness, it's going to be a beautiful sight. And every last one of those people that sat back and laughed at you, that talked about you, that said, look how many things this person is losing. Look at, oh, oh they ain't got this now. I bet you you don't have that now. I had a family member look at me and tell me, oh, well, you, you don't have, huh, you don't have it now. You thought you had it. You ain't got your nurse's license now. Literally looked at me and said that in my face. And all I could do was just look at that person and with my spiritual eyes recognize this is actually an enemy. In spite of the fact that you, my family, my blood, and one of the people that I was the closest to out of everybody, everybody looked me in my face and told me at what seemed to be my lowest point, at least that's what they thought, told me I didn't have nothing now. This right here is confirmation. These two cards came out together, the same cards back to back. That's no, that's no coincidence. This says your commitment is being tested. How committed are you to the process? How committed are you to the process of your transformation? Are you gonna trust the universe? Are you gonna continue to dance in the rain? Are you going to continue to dance in the rain when your shoes is wearing out, when the soles of your shoes is wearing out? Are you going to kick them shoes off and say, you know what? I don't need no shoes because I'm going to walk in. I'm going to walk on Mother Earth. I'm going to ground myself. I'm going to balance my energy. You possess everything that you need to overcome whatever it is that you're going through. I don't care what it is. This is only a snapshot moment of your life. Your commitment is being tested. Stay committed to the process. This message couldn't get no more clear. And it's not just for you all. This message is for me too. Every message that I do is not just for y'all. It's for me too, because I go back and watch them and I gain much wisdom. Because in the, when, I'm, when I'm speaking, I'm being used as a vessel. I don't know what I'm going to say most of the time. A lot of the times, I, you know, I'm told, write this down. Check into this real quick. But this thing, it goes so deep, you know, and it's, I'm emotional mainly because I know the journey, but it's a beautiful journey, okay? Don't define yourself by the material things that you have or that you don't have because you will miss the whole purpose of this thing. You will miss the mark if you operate from that, from that space, okay? Go through the changes because you're gonna have a beautiful testimony. And I look forward to hearing the comments down below for those of you who have gone through these things and have been able to overcome, you know, leave the comments in, a, in you know, below because, and share this message. If you've already gone through things and you've overcome and you're like, okay, well, I've been through that, you, then you're still humble. I know you're still humble because that's something that you take with you for the rest of your life. When you go through these situations as a chosen seed, you to, when you gain your inheritance, you are the most humble person in the world. You do not, ego is no longer, pride is no longer a factor. You are transparent, you are open, you are exuding and operating from the energy of love and compassion and empathy, largely because you understand the journey. So you never go back to being the old version of yourself. Material things, the more that you acquire, the more you're looking for ways that you can share. Because you understand that your cup overfloweth. There is no such thing as lack. Even when I had to go get that money out of my account and I'm sitting up there with all these hundred dollar bills, you know, because it was a few thousand that I had to lay on the table. And I'm looking at it like so detached from the green paper, so detached. Because I recognize that this right here does not define my value. So I don't care how much you know, it, it, it's not even about the number that I see in my account. Whether it's more or less, my value has already been set. I know that I am priceless. There's no, you can't put a price on this head. And this is why those people that wanted to sacrifice the chosen, trying to put a price over the head of the chosen, saying, well, I will sell their soul for a little penny over here, a little penny in a bucket over here. Not realizing they were selling their own damn soul because the Most High said, you touch not my anointed one. You're not touching that one over there. They will fulfill the mission that I have for them. 
They will awaken them in Christ consciousness. They're going to be here to balance out the energy. They are creating the new kingdom. Stand down. You want to remove that energy from your mindset. Your value does not come through green paper. Your value does not come through uh, zeros in your bank account, the number of zeros you have behind a, a single digit in your bank account. Your value does not come through the clothes that you wear, the brands that you wear. I've never been a name brand dropper. That's never been me. Because I always said, if I'm going to wear anybody's name, it's going to be my name, okay? But the value does not come through the clothes you wear. Your value does not come through how much space you have in your living quarters. If you have a place that you can lay your head and you can turn the heat on and you can get up and cook and feed your children, give thanks to the Most High God. Because the more that you give thanks and praise, the more that you outgrow your circumstances to the point where your, your, your energy is so great, the love that you exude is so big that by the time you walk up out of that situation, you're going to be wowed to see how huge and how grand your new home will be. And at that point, all you can do is just shed tears of joy and give thanks to the Most High God because you saw, you saw past the four walls that you stayed in. And you knew that life was not about that. When you come into the realization that you are a spirit having a human experience, then you can get through anything and still have gratitude, genuine gratitude. I'm not talking about the one that you got to force, the one that you have to fake the funk for the world for. I'm, no, I'm talking about genuine gratitude where you can wake up, you know, I get up and I'm, you know, sweeping or cleaning this place up. And I have gratitude for just being able to say, we're safe. We're comfortable. I can feed y'all good. You know, everybody is healthy. We're all strong. We can create, we still create good memories over here. So let me pull a couple of more cards and I'm going to close out y'all. If you want a private reading for me, you know, you can always email me to book a private reading. If you want to order my oils for hair or skin, you can do that as well. Um, a couple more cards okay look at this it says work through your fears get rid of them fears y'all you got to work through those fears any fears that you might have concerning your circumstances or the changes that you're going through write them down burn them and release them i destroy and i release all fear known and unknown in spirit and in flesh burn it then go back and light you a candle get you a glass candle and write on that candle with a permanent marker on the glass I am courageous. I am powerful. I am protected. I am being divinely guided. I accept all changes that are happening in my life with gratitude and joy in spirit and in flesh and let that candle burn through. You got to you got to do when when you when you find that you have hit a roadblock and you've done everything you could possibly do in your physical circumstances. You've gone here. You've asked for help there. You have applied over here. You've done all the things you can do in your physical circumstance to try to shift your physical uh, situation. Then know that you're taking after at that point. Stop trying to do things in the physical. At that point, you need to be balancing out what's happening in the spiritual realm. You need to be casting out mountains and blockages that are in the spiritual realm. You got to start doing the spiritual work. That's where it begins. Last card, we have firm foundation. The number four is uh, coming up twice in this card, which is showing me that this is all about your security. Many of you have been having difficulties with your security and your foundation, but you're being called to create that from within. And so what's being highlighted in this card is the root chakra, uh, and so the root chakra, which is at the base of the spine, represents your security. It represents, if, it, if it's blocked, then you're in survival mode. If it's blocked, then you're having lack mentality. If it's blocked, then you're having fear. Okay? And so this is where you want to work on your root chakra. Ways to work on your root chakra is getting outside into nature and reminding yourself that there's infinite possibilities. The most high gave us so many visual aids that we can see with our natural eyes when we step outside of the four walls that we live in. Be largely because the Most High wanted to remind us that there's infinite possibilities out here. 
and there's no two things that's alike. And, you know, you don't want to limit yourself. You don't want to cut off your potential. You don't want to cut off your vision and say, well, I can only do this and I can only do that. And because of this circumstance, I can only get money from this direction. That's a lie. It's an illusion that has been created within the matrix by the enemy and the enemy was soaking it up. Okay. Now it's time to bring yourself about outside of the matrix and start to see things from a higher perspective. Rise above your situation and see it from your spiritual eyes. And I promise you, you will see the change. Your commitment is being tested. Y'all saw that come out twice. Stay committed to the process because the most high is remaining committed to you. But it's very important that your faith continue to increase. Don't let it decrease. I don't care what changes take place. Give praise in that moment of change because it just means that you're getting closer to your breakthrough. I'm telling you because I have the same testimony. I can sit here today and tell you that I have experienced it. I have lived it and I'm still growing through it, but it ain't going to stop me from carrying out my purpose. All right. So I love you all. And I hope this message was well received by you all. And I will talk to you all next time.